TheDailyNews.com News. My Nation's Original Sin. Biden apologized to the delegation of African leaders for the unimaginable cruelty of slavery and offers them $55 billion as Rwanda president mocks U.S. in front of laughing crowd. Joe Biden on Wednesday apologized for the unimaginable cruelty of slavery, which he referred to as America's original, original sin, and it pledges $55 billion in investment to the continent. Speaking during a gathering of almost all African leaders in Washington, D.C., the first since Barack Obama convened a summit in 2014, Biden expressed regret for the past but insisted the United States is all in on Africa's future. During a White House dinner honoring African leaders and their spouses, Biden addresses what he called America's original sin. The enslavement of millions of people and honoring their descendants and the broader African diaspora community in the United States. Our people lie at the heart of deep and profound connection to that forever binds Africa and the United States together, he said. He remembers the stolen men and women and children we were brought to our shores in chains subject and to unimaginable cruelty. Chinese trade with Africa is about four times that of the United States, and Beijing has become an important creditor by offering cheaper loans, often with OPEC terms and collateral requirements, than Western lenders. But despite Biden's over, over overture, many African leaders rejected the idea that they need to choose between the United States and China. The fact that both both countries have different levels of relations with African countries makes them equally important for African development, said Tay Etsky, Selassie Admindi, Ethiopian UN ambassador. However, it should, be, it should be known, each African country has the, has the agency to determine their respective relationships and best interests. After his, his remarks at the summit, Biden vowed some of the World Cup's semifinal matches between Morocco and the first African nation to reach the semifinals in France with Morocco Prime Minister Aziz Akhamenech. France won the match 2-0. Before the dinner, Biden met leaders from Gabon, Liberia, and other facing, facing 2023 elections for a discussion on election and democratic principles. African economic transition depends on good governments, healthy populations, and reliable and affordable energy, he told the summit. These things, these things businesses seek out when they're looking to invest. They attract new opportunities and they launch new partnerships. And the United States is committed to supporting every aspect of Africa inclusion, growth, and creating the best possible environment for sustained commercial engagement between African comp companies and American companies. Thursday is to be dedicated to high-level discussions amongst leaders. Biden will open the day with a session on partnerships with the African Union's strategic vision for the continent. Jill Biden hosted a program for spouses Wednesday morning at the Kennedy Center for Performing Arts where she told the crowd, my hope is that they way, the, the way we make each other feel will last beyond the summit. The summit is the largest international gathering in Washington since before the start of the uh, pandemic. It was a great honor to watch today's World Cup match alongside Prime Minister Akhmenech of Morocco. No matter who you're rooting for, it was remarkable to watch how much the team has been able to achieve, Biden tweeted after Morocco fell to France 0-2. Roads all around the city center were blocked off and motorcades zoomed by, gridlocking traffic elsewhere, ferrying some of the 49 invited heads of states and other leaders. Africa, whose leaders often feel they've been given short sh shrifts of leading economies remaining crucial to the global power because of its rapidly growing population, significant natural resources, and sizable voting bloc in the United Nations. But Biden invited several leaders who have questionable records on human rights in democracy looming large. Equatorial Guinea was invited despite the State Department stating serious doubts about last month's election in the tiny Central African nation. Opposition parties made credible allegations of significant elected related irregulations, including documented instances of fraud, intimidation, and 
coercion, according to the department. Election officials report that President Teodoro Ebange ruled party won nearly 95% of the vote. Zimbabwe, which has faced years of U.S. and Western sanctions, was also invited. Tunisia, President Kais Saeed, who has been criticized by the United States for de democratic backsliding use and apparent before purporting with U.S. Secretary of State Anton Blinken on Wednesday to offer stout defense of actions he has taken, including suspending their parliament and firing judges. The country was on the brink of civil war all over the country, so I had no other alternative but to save the Tunisian nation from undertaking any nasty action, Saeed said. Biden has promoted U.S. to support for the permanent group of 20 seats for the African Union and the appointment of the Special Representative of Implement Supplement Commitment. In addition to China, talks also spotlighted what the U.S. has seen as a malevolent Russian action on the continent. Administration argued in its sub-Saharan strategy published earlier this year that Russia, a permanent, a permanent arms dealer in Africa, views the continent as a permanent uh, a permissive environment for Kremlin-connected oligarchs and private military companies to focus on fomenting instability for their own strategic and financial benefit. During an appearance with the Blinken on Wednesday, Ghana President Nana Okufi Addo expressed alarm about the presence of mercenaries from Russia Wagner Group in Burkina Faso, directly north of Ghana. This follows a similar deployment of Wagner forces in Burkina Faso, immediately immediate neighbor Mali. Today, Russian mercenaries are on the northern border of said Akufo Odo, adding that he believes Burkina, uh, Burkina authorities have given the Wagner Group control of mines for payment and that the country's prime minister had recently visited Moscow.